So hey, what we'll be doing today is to animate an animation like this, having two cars racing each other. We need to do some drifting, we need to do some jumping. So without further ado, let's just get into it. So we will be using the launch control add-on, which greatly helps when making stuff like this and makes the process much smoother because it has so many features that just work out of the box. Apart from that, we will try to take it from the very basics so everybody can follow along. So even if it's your first time doing car animation, just to stick around, we will go over how to make drifting look more realistic and we'll go over how to link these two cars into the same scene so we can have two cars racing each other. Right now we have two cars animated inside one file. At least it appears to be like that. But actually this Hot Wheels car is not animated inside this blend file. It's actually animated inside another file and then it's linked into this main file. So let me just open up here. This is the Hot Wheels file, which means that whenever I do any edits, any changes inside this file, it will just update in my main file. So let's leave that for now and just focus on the Lego car, which is kind of the hero car of this animation. Okay, so we have our car here placed. It doesn't have any animations now. And we are able to just start from scratch and rig it again and start to do a little animation here. So if your car is already ready for launch control, all you have to do is just click rig vehicle. But if it's some car that you downloaded off the internet, odds are that it won't work right away with launch control. But go watch this video to check out how to prepare your car for launch control. If you have a car that's already prepared, all you need to do to rig your car is click rig vehicle. And then we can play back the animation and everything seems to be working just fine. So a new feature of launch control is that you can now have the steering wheel being animated depending on how the wheels are turning. So how you would do that is that you would head into the manual gearbox and then drop down to rig setup. You can click show rig setup controls. And here you get all sorts of fun controls like you can change the width of the car you can change the size of the car, or you can even change the height of the wheels. But you also have this steering wheel control now. So the way you would set this up is to just align it with your steering wheel. So let's go to the side view and make sure that it's here in the center. Let's use the 3D cursor, just click here and hit period and then 3D cursor to rotate it around the 3D cursor. And you can see how it should be around here to be centered. Let's again try to center it here. Looks like it's pretty decent. So let's click the steering wheel and click the rig once again and head into post mode and then select this steering wheel and hit control P and then bone relative. If you head into advanced animation and then just click extra animation handles, you can see how now inside post mode, when we turn the wheels, the steering wheel is turning as well. And these extra, um, extra things that are rotating, those are just things that I rigged up manually to make it look cooler. So that you can do as well. The way I did that was to use drivers on these different objects to just copy the rotation of the steering wheel. So let's clear out the transforms and let's go back in and remove our extra handles. And now we're ready to animate the car. So first of all, you can see how we have some flickering going on here because Launch Control drain generated its own ground detection plane when you created the rig. So let's just go ahead and get rid of this X to delete it. And you can see our car immediately freaks out. However, it's not really a problem because what we want to be the ground detection is just this, this big plane here. Let's select the plane, hit M and go to car rig add-on and ground detection. Let's place the plane in here and you can see how now the car snaps back onto the ground. So I was thinking for this animation, we want to have the cars um, the cars meeting here around this area and then I want them to be driving side by side and then the, the, the Lego car to drift around at the end and that's the animation. So the Lego car path would, would be something like this and we would have drift in this area and drift in this area. So let's try to do something like that. First of all, let's just take this um, path and let's rotate it by 90 degrees and pull it over here. Let's tap into edit mode and remove these last points. You can see now a message pops up. The length of driving path changed. Please click update driving path. You don't have to do that right now. Only when you finish changing your path. So let's do all the adjustments we want. And then in the end, let's change or update the driving path. So we want the car to go like this. And um, the thing is, you would often want to have the curve be similar to what I'm doing here. So it's kind of stretched in this direction, the turn when you're drifting. 
because the car would be having a lot of momentum going to the right and it will slowly try to get momentum going down. So that means that the turn would look more like this rather than something like this. So try to keep it somewhere like this and we can always adjust this along the way if we figure out that it's not working entirely. Let's just rough it out for now. Okay, I think that looks good. Let's get this one to go down here and swing around here and then just come to a stop. And again, let's try to do the same. Let's try to make this long and then the, the turn kind of flat in the end. So it's very long and stretched here and here it becomes kind of flat. Okay, let's see how this works. Let's click update drawing path and you can see when we play back our animation, the car just comes to a stop here. The reason for this is that the offset or the speed of the car has to be animated too. So by default, it works with this turn path and the turn path is only, let's say, 50 meters long. So the car will travel 50 meters and then stop. So even though we extend the driving path, the car would still only travel 50 meters and then stop. So what we need to do is to go into the pose mode on the rig and then click this speed rotate. Let's jump into the graph editor and here we can see the movement curve. So if you have a movement or a position, then the tangent of that precision curve or precision graph would be the speed at a given point in time. So let's say right here, the speed would be this tangent. And when we get up here, the speed would be, actually we can make a tangent here by adding a keyframe. The speed would be this tangent. So you can see how there is a considerably difference between the speed here, which is higher compared to here, where it's more flattened out and almost straight. So just keep that in mind when animating. Let's first get the car to the final point. So we know the car, we would want it to end around around here. And it should probably end, you can see the other car here is animating and it's getting just flying through the ground because then we don't see it anymore. So I guess the animation would end around 250. So let's take this point, put it in 250. You can see the car only travels until this area here, the 50 meters or whatever. So let's take this point as well and hit G and Y to push it up. And I can see how we can adjust how far the car is traveling. So something like that looks good. Now you can see how our car is moving along the path and it's raising the little car here on the track. The little car is totally overtaking him and in the end stopping there. So right now it doesn't look very beautiful. And that's because we need to adjust the speed so it's not just a constant speed. Because you can see right now, this curve is just straight. It has one angle and the angle doesn't change. That means that the speed at which the car is traveling is the same throughout the entire animation. So to illustrate this, let's take a look at this Hot Wheels car in action. So on the left, the car is traveling at a low speed. That means the angle of the curve is very low. On the second image, the car is traveling at a higher speed. That means the angle is more aggressive or higher. And on the third image, you can see how it goes from having the high speed and then in the middle of the animation to go down and having the low speed. So this is to illustrate how you can control the speed of your car inside Blender with the curves. So one little tool to help you visualize that is a speedometer, which you can find inside the manual gearbox, inside advanced animation and speedometer. You can see how it's traveling 100 kilometers per hour all the time and it's really boring and uniform all the way through. So let's try to change that now. Right here, you can imagine here that when we have the cars racing alongside each other, we want them to be actually next to each other. So let's put a point here with control click and then just pull up the curve until we have the cars in a position we would like. Let's say maybe like this. And then again here, we would probably want the other car to be around there, maybe even a little bit behind. So he's kind of taking over or overtaking the little car. That seems to be good. And here you can see how this turn looks a bit strange. First of all, we want it to drift. And the way to do that is to grab the handle here in the back and then just turn it like this. So we do know that the car should be speeding up until it gets to around this point, this point here. Then he will probably slam the brakes and try to get the 
end of the card to dark to drift. So let's put another keyframe here because this is kind of a critical point. And until this point, I imagine that he would be trying to accelerate. Let's do something like this. So he's gaining one more speed and then here he initiates the drift. So I found this awesome reference online, uh, actually a, a BMW video on how to drift a car. When we study this, let's go frame by frame, you can see how the front wheels of this BMW, they kind of follow the curve, the circular curve around. However, the rear wheels, they don't really follow the curve. They're more like just continue straight ahead. So you have the front wheels going around while the rear wheels are trying to go straight. And this means that the car will slowly start to drift. And this is the kind of thing we would like to replicate in 3D. Inside keying, let's just set the action keying set to available to make it quicker to just add keyframes by hitting I on the keyboard. So let's click I inside the rotation to set a keyframe. And now let's go ahead and move some frames forward, something like this, probably around frame 10. And here we will want to rotate so the rear wheel is still following this straight path. Maybe a little bit less because he might already be... So imagine it's a fight between the rear wheels trying to go this way and the front wheels trying to go this way. So let's hit I to add a keyframe there. Let's move a little further. And here you can see how the car would not be able to reach this straight line anymore, but that's okay. It's because the front wheels are starting to get a grip now and he's starting to change the direction of movement. So let's put on the keyframe. And you can see how now we don't have to drift anymore because we already get the back of the car swinging out a lot. So now it's a little bit up to interpretation how long we should drift for. But probably it will be back around here. So let's play this back and see how it looks like. Okay, you can see something seems a little off. And the main thing is that when you drift, you have a speed, let's say you're going 50 kilometers per hour this way. When you get out of the drift, you will not be going 50 kilometers per hour down because the momentum you had before was to the right. That means that we'll actually lose a lot of speed when we're doing this drift. So let's again click the wheel, go to the top view, and then around here, I think we would already have lost a lot of speed. So let's add a keyframe here and just pull this down slightly. And then pull the next keyframe down too. Okay, probably would lose even more speed. Something like this. So it starts to swing out and we are very low on speed. And now it will start to accelerate once again. So let's take this other point and pull it back a little bit. And there we can see how it accelerates. Let's just make this a little smoother. And then it accelerates like crazy. Probably that's a little bit too much acceleration. Um, so let's push these forward. Okay. Let's grab this guy and now you can see how our, the keyframes we put don't really match anymore because now the car is traveling slower. Um, so what you can do is just grab the these points and then line them up with your line again. So it's something like that. You can see how it's going way, way too fast overboard here. Well, it's, it's turning way too fast. Something like this. Something like that and we'll do something like that let's get rid of this last one okay it seems like it should be drifting a little bit less here in the end so it goes around now it starts to get a grip and already here it should be going backwards towards the center again. And you can see how the acceleration here in the end is like right here, he, I don't know, he, he engages the nitrous or something. 
So let's just fix that by pushing this one a little further. Okay, I think here it's slowing down a little too early and a little too much. And as you can see, it's really just a lot of fiddling, a lot of trying little things and getting it to look like you want it to. But with time, you will get it to look really good and really polished. And the good thing is you can always head back in and change little small things. You don't have to do it perfect the first time. You can make a rough outline to get the timing right. And then you can start to refine it and make it better and better. Yeah, I think something like this could look cool. So the last step would here would be to just jump into the physics and apply some physics to overlay on all of this. So let's click road car preset and apply physics. And this would give us a little bit of extra just movement to the body. Maybe you won't even notice it. Um, another thing we can do is to add a little bit of wheel shake. When a car is traveling fast, it often looks good. If you add a little bit of wheel shake, you can kind of see here if we... Can you hear what it does? It wobbles the entire car if we put it all the way to the max. So let's just put it on there. So there is this slider here called Wheel Impact Physics Factor, which has a very long description because it's hard to explain what it does. But put simply, it takes whatever the wheels are feeling. So if the wheels are feeling an impact from the ground or even wheel shake, it determines how much of that impact into the wheels is translated into the body. That means that let's put this slider all the way to the top and put the weight to max. You'll see how the body is wobbling like crazy because all this impact from the wheels goes directly into the body. If we, on the other hand, take this and put it all the way down, you'll see how the wheels are wobbling, but the body is not wobbling anymore. So I would probably put it somewhere around here and then turn this down somewhere like that. And you could even, if you wanted to, if this was a a Lego model that was old and everything was kind of saggy. You can even make the wheels wobble a little bit. See the back wheel is wobbling like crazy. Probably too much. Let's just add a little bit. Okay, and there we go. You can see here, it looks like the car is kind of slowing down there a little bit and you have a little bit of wobble as well. So that's basically it. the same thing as what we would have to do for the other turn. And then we have our car animation. So let's just in the end take this last point here and just slow down the car slightly so it doesn't have this very abrupt ending. Looks like it's hitting a wall or something in the end. Let's take this guy, let's put it from there. Let's pull out this guy and something like this. Now you can see how it feels like something is wrong. It feels like the car is still doing this weird motion in the end. And the reason for that is that we changed the animation but we didn't update the physics. So let's just hit update physics again. And now we should be able to see that the car is coming to a stop. Okay. And one last thing is that we should probably turn off this wheel shake when the car comes to a stop. Otherwise, the wheels will keep shaking even when the car is at full stop. Let's turn this down to zero. And you can see how it's just turning down as we get to a stop. Okay. Let's try to apply the physics and see how this end looks. Okay. So the car is coming here. It's drifting around the corner. It's heading down, they are racing each other here. And they're coming to a final stunt where they are crossing each other in the air. And our Lego car comes to a little stop here in the end.